has Prime Minister Modi delivered on his Achhe Din promise? Remember, that's the promise, the good days that he came into power in May 2014. Surjit Bhalla, why don't you take that? Give us what you believe is Achhe Din and have they really come? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you. Um, Achhe Din, as is commonly known, good times, good days, and how do we measure whether we are at Achhe Din or not? We measure, economists certainly, measure it by the growth rate uh, per person. And if you now, you know, the world economy um, and India have gone through a real turmoil over the last three years. We had the COVID, after that we had the war in Ukraine, we still have the war in Ukraine, and all economies are in trouble. But as the chart shows, there's one economy that really stands out amongst all the economies of the world, and that is India. Mm -hmm. And the 7% growth rate that is being shown for this year is basically about three or four percentage points higher than even China. So I think on, on growth, there's absolutely no question that we are facing or enduring or uh, enjoying the best growth period that we've had in a long, long time, both in absolute terms I, and relative mm -hmm. terms, relative to what other countries are experiencing. Okay, you know, I, I just want to tell our viewers, average growth 2004 to 13, UPA 6.82%, 2014 to 22, NDA 5.53%. Of course, COVID had a big, uh, was a big factor, but that are, those are the numbers that the World Bank provides. Rajiv Gowda, do you want to respond though that Surjit Bhalla says we are in a better place than the rest of the world post-COVID and that is why he claims that's a definition of Achedin, solid growth rate even post-COVID. I'm afraid that uh, Prime Minister Modi has been a great disappointment. Uh, the economy has not risen and grown as well as it should have. It's, it, we, when the UPA left office, it was, on a, it was picking up and he's not been able to sustain that. More than that, instead of looking at the rest of the world, look at what has happened within India. You will see that there have been um, uh, the absolute numbers of uh, people uh, below the poverty line has actually grown considerably. You also have uh, a situation where um, inequality has been worsening. And you have seen that a small section of rich Indians have been growing and enjoying life very well, while the poor have been suffering and inflation, which has been afflicting this uh, country over the last mm -hmm. few years, has been really a tremendous burden on the poor. Along with this, if you look so at... Where are, where are rates, you getting the numbers about absolute poverty has been COVID. risen? No, no, Professor Gauda, where are speech. you getting the numbers about absolute poverty has been risen? Because, uh, you know, the, the paper prepared by uh, Dr. Bhalla and Arvind Virmani and Karan Basin, uh, a study done by them actually suggests that people in extreme poverty have come down. So when you say poverty has risen, what is the basis on which you are saying that? I'm saying that 217 million poverty, uh, uh, you know, a number of poor, absolute number of poor in 2012, 283 million in 2019-20 in rural areas, and from 53 <laughs> to 63 million in urban areas. It's an absolute numbers have grown. If growth rate had been so good, it would have uh, this would these numbers would not have been there. But remember, pre-COVID. Um, the, every quarter you started to see the government's um, post-demonetization, pre-COVID, you started to see the growth rate of the economy falling, falling, falling until it was down to some 4%. Comparing with other mm -hmm. countries is, uh, is neither here nor there. What we need to look at is what the potential of India was when Mr. Modi came to power and what he has done with that potential. He has underperformed, and okay. the poor of India, the K-shaped recovery post-COVID, all of these are testimony to disastrous economic management and how a large section of Indians have fallen behind. Okay.